Progressive policies once again giving criminals a free pass to punch police officers in the face and be back on the streets within hours. Take a look at this dramatic video. Two officers trying to detain two 16-year-olds who they say jumped a subway turnstile. What you're watching now, one of the teens turns and punches an officer over and over again, wrestling him to the ground, putting him eventually in a chokehold, and the vicious teenager is still battering him until the officers both take him down. Now, that suspect was later charged with assault and resisting arrest. But after violently attacking a police officer, the teen was freed less than 24 hours under the city's lax bail laws. And the president of the PBA has this to say. He says, if New Yorkers want to know why the chaos in the transit system is not improving more quickly, this is why. The criminals underground know they can get in a brawl, choke a cop, and be back out in hours. Cops are putting ourselves on the line to make the subways safer, but we are feeling abandoned by a justice system that won't back us up. Charlie, that teenager also had prior arrests for um, carrying a loaded gun and robbery. <laughs> and what I find interesting is that up until four years ago, actually, 16 and up was considered an adult here in this city rather than now currently 17 and up, which is why these guys are going to be tried and some type of kid court. It's so frustrating. I, I visit New York, you know, once once a year about, and it's changed so much. Yeah. And I just talked to a couple of police officers yesterday, and their morale is so low. Mm -hmm. 37 pages of paperwork just to get one person booked to know that they're likely just to be back on the street a couple hours after. We saw what happened with Congressman Lee Zeldin, you know, just a couple days ago here in the state of New York. But here in New York City, as someone who's an outsider who used to love to come to New York and feel safe and feel as if the rule of law was the pinnacle of kind of what kept this entire beautiful experiment going, the city is falling apart. And it's falling apart because of ideological politicians that are protected. And so we see kind of the ruling class versus the muscular class dynamic playing out across America. In New York, you have the protected versus the unprotected. The protected have chauffeured cars and penthouses. The unprotected are left to fend for themselves. Such a great point, Charlie. Tammy, you, you lived here for so long. Yeah. And um, those who can't afford to take cars every day, who have to take the subway every day, uh -huh. we were talking about it all morning. Um, my girlfriend, who every day she says she sees something terrifying and if she can't leave that car that she's in if she can't get away from the person screaming or shouting or whatever mm -hmm. she said that's when the situation becomes so horrifying she always makes sure to stay as close to the conductor as possible she watched a man chase a woman from car to car to car <clears throat> and then eventually someone stepped in and gave the other woman their own pepper spray so essentially new yorkers wow. are left to fend for themselves who have no choice every day to get to their job to put their food on the table through the subways that now are absolutely out of control well it's terrorism I mean, it is now daily terrorism that is made possible and encouraged by these laws. Uh, the Zeldin situation, for those who are younger, see this well. You can even try to kill a congressman, and you'll be out. You won't spend a moment in jail. And you've got this rhetoric. It's that, but it's also the rhetoric from the left about the police, that the police are the bad guys, that the police are the problem, that you're the hero, you're the one. There is an encouragement in this regard. And uh, this is more than assault. That chokehold could have killed that officer. Yes. Depending on how long it was held. Absolutely. So you, you've that got. That kid could have had a knife, could have had a gun. And this we don't is know. a kid. This person's life, because now it's public, that young person's life will likely not get better, whether they go to jail or not. And it's the gang members as well. Mm -hmm. Under the age of 17, the gang leaders now have these kids do some of the major crimes because they will not yes. face the larger charges. Right. So, yeah. so the Democrats and the left are condemning children. They are condemning their own constituency, women and people of color, workers in the system who must take public transportation. They are the wolf in the house telling you they're there to protect you, and they're setting up the kitchen to cook you up. And the Republicans must step up. Lee Zeldin stepped up. People must have alternatives when it comes to vote in this city and every other blue city. The Republicans still are not aggressive enough in that regard, and they, they need to start being so. Yeah. And Harris, oh, sorry. Real quickly, um, with police officers I'm talking to, there is a sort of more syndicate behavior that they're yes. seeing. Yes. Because those older guys don't want to go back to jail, and their records are so thick that, that maybe the prosecutors would have to consider that. Mm -hmm. But with the younger kids, look, they'll let you off on anything. Felony, they'll let you out. 
with, with no penalty. I don't know if you guys caught any of it. I, I had to watch a lot of it this morning because I just couldn't turn it off before the Faulkner focus. <laughs> so the Senate hearing on the protection of, of law enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Dimitrik uh, Trey Penny is the president and executive director of National Fallen Officers Foundation. He said this, just in part, overwhelming stress on police officers, which has resulted in higher suicide rates. Um, but also, officers nationwide have expressed their frustration with having the arrest, having to arrest the same criminals over and over because no bill initiatives that define the police movement have done any more damage than that. And no one can imagine what that's like to be on the streets and to have the criminals say to you, you can't touch me. Oh, because there's no repercussion to your point. You're combining the recidivist nature and the, the corruption of the criminal justice system with an absolute lack of deterrence. Mm -hmm. So wolves are going to be wolves, right? They're going to take advantage of those before this children mm -hmm. and now defendants in the criminal justice system. Wow, cool. and you talked about, you know, the options. Obviously, the Republican Party needs to step up. I hear what you're mm -hmm. saying. I agree with that. And Morgan, so one example in Minneapolis, a community has raised, they have been approved for $210,000 by the city to pay officers on their off-duty time to work the patrols they would have been working if they hadn't been defunded mm -hmm. prior. They are crowdfunding <laughs> to have police support. What's and that's solution? putting the police in harm's way also. It's a lose-lose situation. Well, I hope they can figure, I hope they have a good accountant to figure out how to get a tax write-off for, <laughs> uh, for paying, you know, yeah. for the job that these poor cops should be doing. I think one of the issues here in New York, too, um, people are moving with their feet. In the past 24 months, I think over 300,000 people um, have left New York City. Um, you've seen very famous celebrities, reality television stars, talk about leaving New York because they yeah. no longer think it's safe for their kids. I also think that we all got really excited with Mayor Eric Adams because it really couldn't have been any worse with de Blasio. I mean, our expectations were down here. And with Eric Adams, we thought, oh, this is a former cop. This is great. He's going to bring the city back to life. And he's just been a huge disappointment. He seems much more concerned about, you know, the woke agenda than actually getting the city back on its feet. Um, I mean, we just saw a couple days ago giving the press conference decrying uh, illegal immigrants coming here um, for, to New York City from Texas. Whenever you're like, wait a minute, if you're a Republican, governor giving that speech, you'd have every name in the book thrown at you. Right. By, by Including the, the book. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, it's not too late to turn it around, but I think Eric Adams has been a huge disappointment and he needs to get crime in the city under control or business is not going to come back. Well, I will he's not say alone. The, How about the mayor of Chicago? Was, yeah. yeah. And in the hierarchy yeah. here, I think yeah. the district attorney is the is the sore disappointment and that I think his his behavior and his decisions have had a larger short term effect. Well, just while we're are. lining up the Can you get rid yeah. of the district attorney? How does that work? Well, well Lee Zeldin has said that's gonna be what he does so the first day of June. It is. They can't oh. recall oh. him the way that they San did Francisco. in California. Yeah. Yeah. But that's but the I would argument say this. I, I agree with voters. you uh, on this point with the mayor here in New York. Emily, he can use his bully pulpit to yeah. talk and to speak the name of the DA. Mm -hmm. He started to say things like there's a revolving door, but let's talk about the people causing the revolving door. Let's That's talk right. about the DA. You're right, you're right. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.